Welcome to Beating Cancer Daily. Beating stage four cancer for 30 years still takes my breath away every time I say it. I'm Saren, founder of the Comedy Cures Foundation, and I hope you'll join me for just a few minutes daily for the next 365 days so we may laugh, learn, maybe cry a little as we live our best days beating cancer daily together. Did you ever just anticipate a moment and you were so excited because you knew it was coming and just knowing that moment was coming made you feel so good inside? Well, they say that if you anticipate laughter, you actually get the benefits of laughing just in the anticipation that you're going to laugh. It was a small study done years ago. So today I have that feeling because I knew that I would be talking to comedian Missy Hall, survivor and comedian Missy Hall. I love saying that, Missy. I just love it. (laughs) Yes. I hope you heard her joyful growl because it was very cool. Anyway, Missy, I just for days now have been so excited that we were going to get to speak again. And if you haven't heard the Missy Hall mini series within Beating Cancer Daily, we've had about 28 conversations, I think, to date on what it's like to get diagnosed, go through cancer treatment and then survivorship real time with Missy in the most authentic and yet oddly joyful way at the same time. It was so traumatizing. (laughs) (laughs) You really gave me and us a blessing by showing up here every week to really let us behind the curtain and also let us into your crazy comic mind and really the insights of what it's like to be a comedian. So again, if you haven't heard every episode, I would say go back to episode one and just start the whole series with us because it's really a a testament to your courage, your resiliency, your sense of humor. And I love talking to you also every episode about how two comedians really think about comedy and this cancer journey. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm laughing and crying at the same time. It's I'm so happy to see you. I'm so, so thrilled. We do that. We do laugh and cry at the same time. Yes, It's cathartic. It's powerful. It is. I think that's the perfect word. It's very, very powerful. It's so so powerful. And I will say that what I'm feeling too is that that's a connection that happens because of what we've been through. And you feel that connection with with people that you only meet for two seconds when somebody puts a hand on you and says, I've been there. You're like, oh, it's- Isn't that an incredibly true statement? That is such a bond that happens not only with people like us, like we knew each other before. Yes, We've gotten so much closer, but when total strangers just share that moment of, I am a patient or I am a survivor, and then you just connect on a cellular level even. Yes, there's just that squeeze of a hand, that extra moment of eye contact and understanding that so much communication just happens in that in that little thing. And there's a powerful observation. That's a very powerful observation. I know that you have been through so much since the last time we spoke. It was like one thing after the next. And it's crazy when you are dealing with your treatments and or immediately after you finish and you're trying to get your new normal back and then you get blindsided and you were blindsided. How you doing? I, it's so strange. It was so, it was like hit, 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 hit. And now suddenly everything's calm. And do you trust that though? Cause there could be some post-traumatic stress in there. 
I I am waiting for aftershocks. It's this, I call it kind of earthquake and full catastrophe living, right? There's the big earthquake and then there's aftershocks. And then also getting a small bit of not good news and going into full-blown, all the dominoes are falling and everybody that I love is going to die. And just, it's... So, and some scary things have come up. Like, I don't mind sharing. and My daughter doesn't mind sharing that. First, I'm going to say it's got a happy ending so far. So that's to be said. But my daughter's pregnant with her second child and went in all happily for an ultrasound. And there was a cyst on the baby's brain. And the cyst in and of itself isn't the concern. The concern is some genetic, really bad stuff that it could indicate. And I went with my daughter for that testing. And then you have to wait two weeks for the results. We got the results. They were good. But that that was huge. That was huge. I just um, want to say that thank you for being so honest. You always are. And you share so much with us. I can't imagine processing that right after just finishing all that cancer story. Like that's just too soon to have to deal with that. And it's your baby, it's your daughter. And that's worse than it being you. And then it's your grandbaby. So just the magnitude of that coming right off just finishing cancer treatment, it it feels like a seismic shift. Yes. Thank you for getting the hugeness of it. Because you're right, when it's saying like she FaceTimed me, she's like, well, I just got back from the doctor. And I was like, I knew you, you can tell with your kid. And she told me and she's like, and they want me to go for genetic testing tomorrow. And I got in the car and I went with her. It's just that thing, worrying about her and then thinking about this baby and doing that thing. I'm like, okay, what could I trade? Okay, I'll have a recurrence. Let's just erase that. Just you just said something that I never hear people say, but we've all thought and done. And a lot of that bargaining happens in the chemo chair. It's like, God, I'll start lighting candles or I'll go to mass or I will do more charity work. Like you do that bargaining with your creator. But very interesting that in this very selfless but beautiful way as a mom, you started using your chips for your daughter and your granddaughter. And I know this is a very serious moment, but comedically, and anybody that's hearing me say that is probably going, she is so cold. How could she say this? But I'm literally sitting here going, The beauty of this podcast is that we do mix healthcare and humor and coping strategies. And because it's Missy, I can say this because she's a comedian. I wouldn't just say this to anybody that I'm helping. But Missy, that is comedy gold because it comes from such pain, but it's a universal moment. You have to figure out how to incorporate that bargaining into your comedy act. Yeah. I. Absolutely. Because there's also that that moment of if we could control things by bargaining, this would have had like, why would this be the first time I, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, I'm going to wait till now. I, I could have done this and gotten her through high school easier. I don't know. There's all kinds of things. But there was that moment I was, I literally was like, take me instead. Take me instead. Let this baby be fine. Let my daughter be fine. Just take me, take me. And that, that is that is so real. Mm-hmm. And yes. for somebody that's just gone through what you went through and for you listening, if you're in that moment too, that is a very powerful statement and a very powerful selfless offering. And we've all been there in one way or another with a sick child or sick parent or sick friend where we did think about that moment of 
offering ourselves up. Mm-hmm. But wow. I mean, just to hear another person verbalize it out loud, it just needed like a moment for me to absorb because I've thought it in my prayers, but to have another person say it is really powerful. And it's so real, so visceral. And like in some way, okay, can we do that exchange at the hospital? That's not how it works, but that was my feeling going in there for sure. For sure. And then sitting with my daughter through the genetics counseling, I made some very horrible jokes. But with wait, my- wait, I was just going to say there's nothing funny about your daughter having a baby with a cyst that could have genetic mutations. But yet I know the two of us think comedically and that those thoughts can't help but bombard us, even if it's just from a nervous stress management reaction. Yes. But did you say them out loud? Oh, the worst one. Oh, no. Okay. But, and, okay. And here's the thing. It's so beautiful because this was a, could be a very terrifying appointment for my daughter. And she came out and she was cry laughing and calling her friends on the way home because I, all right. <laughs> The genetics counselor, first of all, looked like she was 12. She was very, very young, very serious. It's a new field, Missy. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's a newer field. (laughs) It's so true. I'm like, I was like, is everybody 12? Because mine was too. The genetics counselor was very young and very serious. And the conversation started in a very kind of somber way. She's like, do you understand the kind of information we can uncover? And and so we're going through the history and she talks to me about my history of miscarriage, my mother's history of miscarriage and my grandmother. And then she offers up the information that her grandmother had nine children and six miscarriages. And then I don't know what prompted me to say, I was like, isn't it strange? You know, you're a little girl and your grandmother is doing things like making cookies, but she is clearly having so much sex, like so much. And we don't think of our grandmothers as doing that. And everybody just stopped. And Carly looks at me. I was like, seriously, my grandmother had six kids and four miscarriages. I'm like, our grandmothers were were whores. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I cannot believe you said it. I can't. But it's hilarious. And what made it more hilarious is the genetics counselor did not laugh. And my daughter could not stop laughing. Like she was cry laughing and I was like, I'm sorry. I was like, they're not, I'm just, I, they're not the word that I used. I'm just saying we don't think of our grandmothers as sexual beings. And then I just kept saying the words grandmothers and sex. I'm like, why can't I stop talking? Because I was trying to kind of dig myself out of the hole. And then I'm like, okay, let's just go back to diseases because they're, they're less uncomfortable. But the beauty of it is, is my daughter was just elevated to a point of such humor and laughter that when we left that meeting with all kinds of potentially terrifying information, she couldn't stop laughing. And she was on the phone with all of her friends. My mom just called the genetics counselor's grandmother a whore. Like, (laughs) that is such a perfect example of how laughter can be the best medicine. And you did traumatize that genetics counselor. But, but in the scenario, I do understand we sacrificed a genetics counselor for your daughter's mental health. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. And I'm sure it won't be the last awkward conversation she has. And yes, and I, th- and that's the other thing I'm thinking of this poor girl, and I'm calling her a girl, not out of disrespect, but from my mom heart, from my mom heart of, oh, honey, I know that I just 
really made you very uncomfortable. And I, I just want her to be okay because I'm like this, I felt like this had to have been one of her first days on the job, right? Because she's so young. So then I was then over nice, but it was a situation where we went there nervous, scared, and Carly was just like, mom, <laughs> and it was the best. You so know? beautiful. I Just to bring it back to the medical world, I've given talks before to doctors who are really interested in using humor in their practice. And so I've done workshops with doctors and nurses, actually, on how to incorporate more humor, laughter, play, especially when they're dealing with such tough topics all day long. Is it appropriate to use with their staff? Is it appropriate to use with patients? And so it's a really interesting conversation. And you did it as the patient trying to soothe your daughter and to make the situation less, not serious because it's a serious situation, but the toxicity of the drama and the anxiety of it and the fear, you alleviated so much of that for your daughter. Like I said, you traumatized the doctor, but <laughs> the counselor, like it's a powerful strategy. And I know that it just came naturally to you because you're a comedian, but I think it's valuable. And I think if that's going to help you and your daughter process the situation that is just so painful and scary, then you should have the liberty not to call the genetic counselor's grandmother <laughs> the W word, but to be able to use humor and and really look at the situation to just bring some light and air. It gives you a moment to process. It really does. After you can laugh, you have a reboot, a reset. Missy, thank you so much for sharing that with us. I think it's a powerful teaching moment, but I also want to know, are there any updates on that appointment? Yes. It was beautiful because I went and spent the day with my daughter um, last week we got the news and we are sitting on the couch and the phone rang and she's mom is the genetics counselor. And I got to sit right next to her and she put her on speakerphone and the counselor said there were no abnormalities in the genetics screening, no trisomy 18 or any of the truly scary things we were talking about. And you'll just be following up with your doctor as the pregnancy goes on. And it was, it was the relief just floated away. And it, I'm, I'm so grateful. I, anything that had showed up in that test is something that we certainly would deal with as a family. My daughter, her husband will be amazing parents no matter what. But my mom heart, my grandmom heart was so happy to know, okay, at least this is not happening. So, and guess what? You're still here. So God didn't take yeah. the trade. Yes. So that was really a good, happy ending. True. The baby's going to yes. get its grandma too. So yes. I'm glad, I'm glad God was having a sandwich yes. when, you, <laughs> when you asked for that. And exactly. selfishly, selfishly, it just means that you get to come back yes. next week to Beating Cancer Daily and give yes. us your very honest insights, not only into survivorship at this point, but also resetting and dealing with what life gives you and how you look at it in this comedic way, which that was, that was incredible that at that moment, whether it was nerves or just your wit that took over and you were able to diffuse that situation for your daughter. You're such a blessing. Thank you, Missy. 
you're a you're a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're a blessing. Okay, we're fangirling. Yes, we are for sure. <laughs> I love you, and I'm just so happy to do this with you within Beating Cancer Daily. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I love you so much, and this is just the best thing. It's the best. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to know more about Missy Hall. You can find her on all social media. She has a brand new spanky website that's really cool and a blog also. But Tuesdays, she and her husband, Jeremy, who's also a comedian, meet and they have a live Facebook date and you can sit among two comedians (laughs) and see their perspective on everyday life and marriage and they're just darling and funny. So enjoy that on Facebook Live on Tuesday nights. If you want to give us your coping strategies and tell us how you're handling these crazy moments while you're going through cancer treatment or during survivorship, you can just go to comedycures.org, hit the contact menu and write to us or go to the podcast section and just record a message. We love your feedback. This community is so beautiful and so enlightening, and it's just an honor to hear your thoughts and incorporate them into this 365-day incredible daily experience. So have a blessed day, and I'll see you tomorrow. If you've enjoyed this podcast, then I'd love to ask for you to go to comedycures.org and check out our membership circle levels. You will find even more resources and more programming like our live virtual Q&A sessions with me, our live Comedy Cures events with our very talented comedians, live health builder workshops with Jackie Bryan hosted by me, a robust monthly newsletter, plus much more. It's really an exciting community So please consider becoming a member, giving it as a gift, telling your friends, telling your hospital support group all about this community. I can't think of a more empowering way to go through a cancer journey or your survivorship or your caregiving experience than with us at Beating Cancer Daily. It's truly an honor to serve you. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow. Guess what time it is. It's time for me to read the disclaimer. Beating Cancer Daily and the Membership Circle are not in lieu of medical advice or treatment. They are for entertainment purposes only. Please consult your healthcare team to review your best strategy. Thanks for listening.